This is video number 11, uh, dealing with various topics in quantum mechanics. In this video, we're going to consider the linear momentum operator and specifically try to convince ourselves that it is indeed a um, Hermitian operator. And just a reminder, the playlist for all the videos on uh, the playlist is not listed on YouTube, but it is at the uh, website at digital university. Org. Okay, the momentum operator has a strange definition. It actually is a differentiation operator. And we're designated as Px. Again, we're just working uh, with uh, particles that are moving along on the x-axis. So we're just operating now in one dimension. And as we discussed in um, the previous videos, for each particle that's moving on this imaginary x-axis, there's a wave function associated with that particle. And the wave function has the property, and usually the wave function is a function of position and time. In this video, you'll see it's just writing it as psi. But keeping in mind that psi not only depends on x, but also depends on time as well. Now, the wave function has the property that when you multiply it by its complex conjugate, like this, that gives you the probability of where the particle, of the particle being in a certain position. And what we're going to be doing here then is showing that when the momentum operator operates on the wave function, it indeed operates with the properties of a Hermitian operator. That's what we want to show that indeed with this operating on the wave function, psi, that indeed this behaves like a Hermitian operator. And remember, from our previous videos that for an operator to, to be Hermitian, it must have this property. That this must be a real number. The things that it's operating on might be complex, but when you perform this operation, it has to be a real number. And remember that for functions, um, the way that we perform the inner products is we integrate them, multiplying by their complex conjugate, and who will just designate dx. Because for the moment we're, con we're confining our, or restricting our discussions to just particles that are moving on the x-axis. But let's see now. That with this, we would have then, we would have psi our operator and psi. So this would be equal to, and our x axis can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Then we would have psi dagger. That's from this. Remember, this is the ket, this is the bra, therefore we can think of this as being the complex conjugate of this. And then this is this. So we would have, take the minus ih out. Well, let's just leave it in for the moment. Minus ih, the partial with respect to x, dx, the partial of what? the partial of psi. So we have this, and we're using the partial here again because our wave function depends um, not only on position, but can depend upon time as well. But here we can just write this for the moment like this, and we can take this to the outside if we want to.
and move this over. The question is, is this a real quantity? Is this real? This whole quantity here, is this real? Well, let's look at this integral further by applying, um, by integrating by parts. Remember how that is set up. We have the integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. So in this integral right here, we can, this obviously is going to be dv, so we say let dv equal this. So v, that will equal psi. And let u u will equal psi dagger. Now when we take du, we're going to write it again saying that du will equal this partial of psi because we're considering psi with respect to only one variable, that is x, but really depends upon time as well. Okay, but now let's apply this formula to this situation here. So we have minus i times this integral. Try to keep things in focus. Psi star partial psi and that will be equal to minus i h bar times this. Now what is uv? u is this psi, de, psi star v is psi so we have psi star times psi and this will go from minus infinity to plus infinity. then we have minus this. But before we go further, let's consider this term. These are the wave functions for our particle. And by nature then, the wave functions are well defined. They might look maybe Gaussian in shape. They don't have to be though. Or they might be something like this. The point is, is that they have a beginning and they have an end. So if you're way out here at infinity or minus infinity, they're going to have a value of zero. So this first term here is zero. Then for the second term, we have minus the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of v du. Here's v, there's du. So let's see what we have. We have on this side minus ih. This is Planck's constant, of course. And we have this integral psi star. And now we can say the partial of psi with respect to x dx. That's just multiplying this by 1 essentially. And what is that equal to? Minus i h bar times this makes this plus times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi 
partial of psi dagger with respect to x dx. So let's look at this. Here we have minus i times Planck's constant. Here we have plus psi times Planck's constant. Here we have psi star. Here we have psi. Here are the partial of psi with respect to x. Here we have the partial of psi star with respect to x. So this entire side is just the complex conjugate of that entire side. So we're saying that here we have this entity here and it's equal to its own complex conjugate. Well the only way that can happen is as if it's a real entity. That's the only time you can have some entity equaling its own complex conjugate is if it's a real number. So that means that yes in fact this is real. So we go back to the top and again we can say this with respect to x dx. Is this real? Yes, it is. So that means then that of course this is real which means that the linear momentum operator indeed um, is Hermitian. Okay, now with that out of the way, what we can do is Hermitian operators, they have to have real eigenvalues and of course eigenfunctions and the eigenfunctions um, are complete and they are orthogonal to one another. What are the eigenfunctions for the linear momentum operator with this definition right here? That we will examine um, in the next video we will go ahead and calculate what the corresponding eigenfunctions are. And just a general comment, why in the world should, in quantum mechanics, should the momentum of the particle have this strange expression? And we'll try to provide a justification for this, but that lies off um, three or four videos down the line here. Anyway, come back, join us for the next video. We'll examine the momentum operator some more, and we want to determine what are its eigenfunctions and what properties do they have?